Welcome to the Kale Hauser Leadership Secrets Podcast. Today, we're going to talk about tips for a successful networking event. Hello and welcome back to the Kale Hauser Leadership Secrets Podcast. My name is Kale Hauser, co-founder and CEO of Kale Hauser Leadership. If you have not checked us out, make sure you go to kalehauserleadership.com. Get your guide for the 10 best interview questions that you can start asking to find the right people for your business. If there's something you need a little bit more help with, please check out VIPleadershipmastermind.com to join our Leadership Mastermind. We do two live calls every week. Uh, we focus on, of course, leadership. Uh, but in addition to that, we do usually like a sales and, and marketing type of a call to help people understand how to prospect better, how to um, you know, do demonstrations, the whole kind of sales cycle, as well as marketing to help get your business known. Because that's probably the number one problem that any business has is getting known. Uh, and making sure that their marketplace is aware of all of the amazing things that you do. Now, part of the marketing piece of this can absolutely be the networking events that you attend. Now, you may be the business owner, you may, may be the department head or some sort of leadership capacity in your business, and you need to actually help expand your business, help get your presence known. So people, when they think of, well, I need to, my air conditioners on the fritz, when they think of, instead of just looking Google, you know, Palm Palm County air conditioning, they go, oh, I need to contact Kale Hauser air conditioning. Like that's the guy because I just saw him at this networking event and he was super friendly and nice and all these things. And I, it got me thinking about for a lot of people and me included to a degree, going to a networking event, whether it be Chamber of Commerce or these kind of companies that are specifically set up to help network or BNI, like it can be absolutely intimidating because, you know, of course it's an unknown. Sometimes you're just new at it. So anytime you go into something unknown, it's a little bit intimidating. You're unsure of yourself, but you may be easily as well finding yourself at a large conference where yes, there's just a thousand other people there that are your customer base. They are your clients. They are your future partners. And how do you go about making yourself presentable and attractive in the sense of people want to talk to you? People are not deterred by your presence. They're not turned away as they see you come down the hall. They're like, oh, I want to go the other direction. But they're actually like, oh, this looks like an interesting person that I, I want to engage with and at least learn more about them. So I wanted to provide uh, what I'm calling my tips for a successful networking event, as in you attending one. Um, I'm not, this is not about putting on an event or anything. I've, I've, I did a series on that about running your own meetings and, own, and events and kind of tips and tricks for that. But this is more focused on you or if you've got somebody that, you know, does that for you, that's kind of their job is your outside salesman, uh, for lack of a better term, you know, please make sure you share this podcast with them and, and get these tips because there may be something that they hadn't thought about um, that is part of their normal practice that can be an absolute game changer. Um, and sometimes our blind spots are just that's just what they are our blind spots. We can't see them ourselves until somebody else can point them out. Uh, this is not an all inclusive list. Of course, in increments, we can get better and better and better as we go through this process. But this is kind of what I would consider a groundwork uh, for being best prepared to put your best foot forward as you step into this networking type event. All right. So a lot of people and I've been to several networking events, as you can imagine, do not take this seriously in the form of what do you look like? What is your appearance? What clothes are you wearing? Your dress and how you dress, whether it's appropriate to the venue, to the, the group, the target audience of that networking event will absolutely impact how people see you. If you go to a business conference, so there's a, a big business conference coming up for, for Grant Cardone, his business boot camp um, that we are attending. If I show up there in flip-flops and shorts and a t-shirt, do you think anyone there is going to take me seriously? Do you think anyone there is going to want to waste their time talking to somebody like that? Because it is absolutely not appropriate for the venue, for the target audience of that conference, of that networking event. You understand this, right? But I cannot tell you how many times I've been to networking events where there is somebody dressed like, what are you even doing here dressed like that? Because most of the business events I go to or, or networking events I go to are more professional based. Business casual is okay. You can still be casual. But walking up like you just came from a day at the beach 
or you're on your way to the Walmart grocery store in your sweats and flip-flops or Crocs, like that's not appropriate. Now this goes beyond just your clothes and the clothes you choose to wear. What about your haircut? Does it look like somebody just flopped a dirty mop on your head this morning? Are you nice and clean cut? Is your hair done well? Do you present yourself just visually appealing to people that they wanna talk to you? And they're not intimidated by what's going on up here? What about your nails? Long, dirty? Well manicured, painted, because that's what people see, especially if you're a hand talker like me <laughs> and, and you're constantly up here and holding your fingers up and your hands up. They see your nails and it makes an impression because people are soaking all that in. What about your deodorant? Do you wear deodorant? A little extra cologne, but not so much that there's a, a sphere around you that people cannot penetrate because they'll just get drowned in old in Stetson. <laughs> Or, or Jakar or something. But is it appropriate to wear like, oh, like, oh, this is a pleasant, pleasant person. You know, like I'm kind of mysterious, right? What about your teeth? Breath is absolutely critically important as you are going to these events. Like, that's just the way it is. If you need to carry some mints in your pocket, do so. If you need to carry some breast spray, do so. But understand that same with, you know, you've got coffee breath or something and it's in an, an event to where it's maybe super loud, which a lot of networking events are, and you're having to be close to somebody in order just to hear them. Understand that as you're talking, you're projecting your breath is going straight to their face and their nose. Does it smell like yesterday's coffee? Does it smell like garlic toast you had for lunch with your pasta? Or is it actually kind of pleasing? Minty fresh, like learn these types of things and watch for the feedback as if they're pulling back as you're trying to talk to them, it could be your breath. Check that out, fix it. All right, so that was number one, dress appropriately to include obviously your clothes, your hair, your nails, your teeth, deodorant, how you smell, all those things. Do you present yourself appropriately for that target, target audience and target market, okay? Second is eye contact and smile. Holy smokes. You cannot be what is commonly referred to as an attractive person. Now I'm not talking like sexually attractive or, or, or visually, but attractive as, as in people want to be around you. They are attracted to you. They want to talk to you um, and just be in your presence. You cannot do that without eye contact and smiling. Think about the last time you wanted to go talk to somebody that was frowning, that had that, that scowl on their face. Now, ladies, there was this thing that was, you know, kind of popular that went around the last couple of years of this resting, you know, what face. If you know that is you, if you know you're natural, like you may be completely content and happy inside, but the, the natural muscle positions of your face when you are not actively smiling is kind of that resting, you know, what face. You need to practice this because you are unapproachable if that is you. Even though inside you may totally be open to being approached, to be totally open and to talk. But your external is just raising danger, 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 don't go near here. <laughs> but you can fix that by just that smile. And it does not have to be this like I'm walking around like a clown. At the end of the day, my cheeks are just super sore from smiling all day long. And you're showing all your teeth. But the simple like, hey, how you, you know, how you doing? Nice to see you. That simple greeting smile and the eye contact is absolutely important. Fellas, we, are, we have a, a reputation for not maintaining eye contact, especially with members of the opposite sex, with the ladies. Remember, they are up here, they're not down here, right? Hitch does a really good job. That movie Hitch with Will Smith and Kevin James, he does a really good job of explaining this in a comedic way when speaking with a, a woman, right? They are not down here, they're not at, at their mouth, they're, you're looking at their eyes and you're making eye contact. That's how you create connection with people, whether in a romantic relationship setting as was exampled in the movie Hitch or in a business setting of a future partner of a client. And I, you better believe that the ladies are paying attention to this. Are you showing interest in them or in just something else that's about them? Okay. 
And the same with, with ladies to men, like we're paying attention to what you're observing because people do that. We naturally want that feedback in those non or those nonverbal cues of where are we looking? Eye contact. And I talked about this in a previous episode about, are you looking around as you're talking to somebody? This is about, you know, communicating and being a good conversationalist as you're talking to somebody and they're talking to you, are you trying to scope out everything else? I can be guilty of this because I am very aware of my surroundings at all times. Like I try to stay aware of everyone around me and, and what's happening. And I have, I have to super focus when somebody's talking, like, especially if there's a lot of distraction and people around me, uh, in, a, in an unfamiliar environment, like I have to super focus and this may be you as well. All right. So we're going to go the second. So eye contact and smile, smiling, man. It's, it's the welcome. It's the in invitation. Like, Hey, I'm, I'm happy to talk to you. I'm a nice person. I'm non-threatening. That's what a smile does. And that's what it conveys. And you need to be that in your networking event. Assuming, I guess I should clarify and make this, this disclaimer. This is all assuming you want to engage at this networking event, that you were not set there just to be a, a fly on the wall, that you're actually trying to make connections and contacts. Okay. So let's get that out of the way. All right. The third one, and this was brought up by a good friend of mine, and he's been a previous guest of, of this podcast, Joe McKittish. Uh, out of Idaho with Do Work University. He wears a name tag everywhere he goes. He has a very um, recognizable brand and appearance that he does. He's a cowboy hat, his mustache. He always wears his Do Work University t-shirt, but he always has a name tag on. And when we first met him, and it's been about a year, a little over a year ago, uh, we, we just asked him about that. Like, you know, why do you do that? He's like, because people forget names especially at a large networking event where you're you know meeting 10 20 50 people and in the middle of conversating with somebody it's embarrassing to be like oh hi joe oh hi kale and then that three seconds later you're like oh my gosh i don't remember this person's name have you ever done that i do that all the time and there's things that you can do to help yourself remember but i'm talking about how people for approaching you having that name tag allows them to avoid that awkward situation of them forgetting your name, especially if you have kind of one of the more common names. If you're a John, if you're a Joe, if you're a Steve, I being Kale can usually, I will help people remember my name by saying, oh, hi, I'm Kale. Like, yeah, Kale like the vegetable. Or even my last name, Hauser. If you're of a certain age, you've seen the, the TV show back in the, I guess, 80s, 90s, Doogie Hauser MD. Like, oh yeah, I like Doogie Hauser MD. Like some people call me Doogie. Right, it helps them create that connection with my name to remember it. But if you don't have that, a name tag will do absolute wonders. It will do wonders and people will be more comfortable talking to you and you, you get rid of that awkwardness of if they happen to forget your name, which is a common thing. So I would highly encourage you, you can get them for like 10 or 12 bucks. Uh, there's, you know, like nametag.com, I think is one of them. You can get it with your logo and all the your little magnetic or a pin, like whatever you like. And you can just start wearing it to your networking events. And now people know who you are. Don't let it make you feel silly. All right. We're going to talk about, so we've been going for a little bit. I'm going to do one more here and we're going to break this into a part two. Uh, this is business cards. Now there are people that will live and die by the concept of business cards. It is their identity. It is what gives them validation of whipping out that business card. You know, maybe there's something cool about having that business card and it's that validation of like, I have made it, I have arrived, I have a business card. But the reality is nobody looks at those business cards. Now there are some that make it a practice. They'll go back and go through their contacts and you know set that up. Um, and I'm gonna talk about that later, but how much more effective, how much more memorable would it be is if instead of saying like, okay, you've introduced yourself, you're like, man, we gotta, we gotta stay in contact. We gotta continue this conversation at a later time. Let's take a selfie real quick and I'll shoot you a text. So you, has anyone ever said no to that? Like, no, I don't want that picture. Like if they're having a conversation with you, they're willing to continue the conversation more than likely. So you take out your phone, you turn around with them, you put a big smile on your face, click. All right, what's your number, Jack? Click, 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 click. You text them, hey, Jack, this is Kale from the business boot camp with Grant Cardone in January. Pleasure to meet you. I'm looking forward to talking to you further. You send that message, you send the picture. Now they know who 
you, they've got your number, they know who you are, where they met you, and a picture of you so they can remember. How much more effective is that than looking at a business card that says, Kale Hauser Leadership, this is my number. You have no idea where we met. He has no idea what I look like of the 15, 20, 100 people that they met over the weekend. This is the game changer. This is where you up your level of rememberability and connection when you go to these networking events. Does that make sense? So we talked about dressing appropriately to include your grooming and your sense, eye contact and smiling to create and uh, continue that welcoming presence. Wearing a name tag, helping people to remember your name, and then also getting rid of the business cards, like have a couple in your pocket, sure, for somebody that needs more information or maybe you've got something on there, but turn it into that selfie, that more personable, memorable moment. We are in a society of pictures now. Start using it to your advantage. Um, in addition to that, and I forgot to mention earlier, hey, what's your Instagram? Ka -ka -ka. Follow them right on Instagram. You don't even need to ask for the follow back because then it's about you, but follow them. Connect on LinkedIn. Hey, what's your LinkedIn? Ka -ka -ka -ka, right, as appropriate for your venue. And you do it right there, right then. How much more of a connection does that make? Okay, join me for part two. Thank you so much for joining me. If there's anything we can do to help you with regards to this and you're like, Hale, I need some help with this, reach out. DM me, uh, shoot me an email, kalehauserleadership.com. Uh, leave a comment on here and I'll get back to you as soon as I am humanly able. But the best way really is for you to join our mastermind and you get access to this real time twice a week. Uh, and get to answer, uh, get all your questions answered and learn some pretty amazing things. VIP Leadership Mastermind.com. Uh, get your first month half off. Talk to you soon, no matter where you are in the world. Have a fantastic afternoon. Bye.